kids, do you have a spooky story to tell? If so, we'd love to hear it, fact or fiction. Send your story to microterrors at gmail.com to have it narrated on the Micro Terrors podcast, posted on microterrors.com, and published in a future Micro Terrors anthology book. Visit microterrors.com and click on the Listener Terrors tab for more information and to submit your scary story. <laughs> Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season, full of chills, thrills, and spine-tingling spooks. Micro-terrors are family-friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night. And some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. Crypt of the Castle Creeps by Scott Donnelly Come on! Benjamin cried out. Don't be such a scaredy cat! Liam, Benjamin's friend and accused scaredy-cat, was hesitant, and with good reason. They were about to trespass on the infamous plot of land where Goldfield Manor, a large, gothic castle, loomed over the valley like a hungry owl stalking its next prey. "'I'm not a scaredy-cat, I'm just trying to follow the law,' Liam said. "'Trespassing is a crime!' Yeah, trespassing on property where someone lives, Benjamin said. Goldfield Manor hasn't been occupied since the 1950s. Can't you tell by the rusted gates, the overgrown weeds, and the dilapidated structure? No, I can see all of that just fine, Liam said. Those are also all kinds of reasons not to go in there. I mean, what about the... Liam stopped himself before he spilled the beans on why he didn't want to cross the threshold. Even though it was an obvious reason, he didn't want it out in the open that he truly was afraid. But Benjamin had already figured. The ghosts? Benjamin laughed. <laughs> Those are all just stories. <laughs> there are no ghosts in Goldfield Manor. Ghosts don't exist. Trust me. Liam swallowed his words. There was no use arguing with Benjamin. When he had made his mind up about something, there was no changing it. Liam was better off just tagging along, getting their little excursion done and over with, and then going home to his warm bed. As the moon crossed over the sky, casting an amber glow down upon Goldfield Manor, Benjamin made his move, and Liam quickly scuttled up behind him. Through the rusted gates and sea of wavy overgrowth, the boys ended up at the crooked staircase that climbed up to a large wooden door at the front of the manor. The place had been abandoned for over 70 years with its last known occupants, Lorne and Lizzie Goldfield, having vanished without a trace in the 1950s. The house was searched, as was the entire plot of land their mammoth home sat on, but no sign of them was ever found. The city decided to condemn the house and let it rot where it stood letting nature reclaim it. That's when the horror stories began to spread. Rumors of ghosts and goblins lurking within Goldfield Manor spread like wildfire. Local thrill-seekers saw it as a challenge. Trespass, search for ghosts, and get out before they either become possessed by evil or caught by a passing police car. Benjamin shimmied the front door open with a crowbar he had brought and then pushed it open. The door creaked so loudly that Liam feared anyone within a mile of the manor would hear them breaking in. Come on, Benjamin urged his friend. Each of them armed with a flashlight, the boys crept into Goldfield Manor and began exploring. At first there was nothing exciting. 
Benjamin even sighed in disappointment. The rooms they walked through were empty, no furniture, no artifacts, nothing. They explored the upstairs, the downstairs, and finally came to a door that had a padlock on it. The lock was seamlessly covered in dust and was still locked. It was obvious that the door hadn't been accessed in a long time. Liam crossed his arms and fought off a cold shiver that ignited within its body. Looks like no one's explored what's behind door number one, Benjamin quipped. <laughs> Until now. Just like he did in baseball practice, Benjamin swung the crowbar repeatedly until the padlock broke apart and fell to the ground. Liam stepped back. Whoa, what are you doing? He cried. Are you crazy? Benjamin said. I'm not coming to Goldfield Manor and not breaking into the secret locked room. Are you crazy? Liam shot back. You don't know what's in there. There could be... <laughs> ghosts? Benjamin laughed. I'm telling you, Liam, there are no ghosts here. Those are just scary stories meant to keep us out. Liam didn't respond. He just stood back and crossed his arms stubbornly. Then go explore on your own. I'm staying right here. Fine, scaredy cat. Benjamin laughed. He turned his back to his friend and then pushed the door open. There was nothing but darkness inside. His flashlight caught the vague glimpse of a downward-bound wooden staircase, but the dark was so overwhelming that it swallowed most of the light. Benjamin puffed out his chest and stepped through the doorway. When he reached the bottom of the stairs, he felt a very noticeable change in temperature. Where the upstairs was warm and muggy, the crypt he found himself in was cold and damp. He aimed the light around but still couldn't penetrate the darkness. Then suddenly a fire burst into existence, bringing the crypt to life. The fire burned in a steel furnace across the room from him, and Benjamin was finally able to see his surroundings. The walls were made from stone, glistening with leaking water. The ceiling corners all held heavy collections of cobwebs. Laid out in front of him were six sarcophaguses, each of them made from flat stone. Benjamin gasped and took a couple of steps backwards. That's when he heard the noises, groans and grunts, hisses and shrieks. His presence in the crypt had awoken something malevolent. Just then, the flat stone tops on the sarcophaguses cracked and shattered, falling down into their respective caskets. With dust and grime billowing up from within them, their occupants rose to their feet. All six in unison opened their mouths to expel haunting noises. Being only shadows through the rising dust, Benjamin watched as their angry eyes glowed white-hot. Benjamin screamed and dashed back up the stairs, plowing Liam out of the way. "'Oh, you creep!' Liam exclaimed. "'What's the big idea here?' Benjamin came to a stop and faced his friend, quivering in fear. He stumbled over his words and couldn't form the warning he wanted to. Behind Liam, Benjamin saw a pair of white, hot eyes viciously burn through the darkness, followed by another pair, and then another. Soon, twelve bright eyes lurked in the darkness of the stairwell. Look out! Benjamin was finally able to scream. Liam turned around and faced the assembly of glowing eyes. From within the darkness, twelve deteriorating arms reached out and grabbed Liam, pulling him in. Benjamin turned and ran for his life as Liam's screams echoed through the castle. As Benjamin reached the front door, Liam's screams came to an abrupt stop. He too came to stop just before rushing out of Goldfield Manor. He turned around and aimed his light. Aside from a leaky drip somewhere nearby, silence surrounded him. Liam! Benjamin stuttered. Within the beam of his light, he saw nothing. Then the bulb flickered and went out, plunging the entire room into darkness. Benjamin smacked his flashlight, trying to resuscitate it, but it was no use. Then a chill rippled through his body. He began to shake and felt an overwhelming, malevolent presence. That's when fourteen white-hot eyes ignited all around him like lighters at a concert. 
A chorus of horrible wails, hisses, and shrieks gushed from the blackness, and Benjamin felt all their decrepit hands reach out and pull him in. His scream was cut short, but his reign in the crypt, along with Liam and the six others, was just beginning. Goldfield Manor stands in a foggy, dead landscape, looming over the valley like a hungry owl stalking its next prey. And with two new additions to the crypt, prey would soon come searching, just like it always did. Thank you for listening to Micro Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where you can get the latest Micro Terrors news, read fun facts about each story, sign up for our monthly newsletter, and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you can become one of the terrified by joining the fan club at microterrors.com to enjoy exclusive perks like reading stories a week early, receiving complimentary books, and communicating directly with Micro Terrors writer and creator Scott Donnelly. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram using the handle at Micro Terrors. I hope you'll join us again soon for Micro Terrors, scary stories for kids. Hey, mystery seekers, love spooky stories? Dive in to Creepy Clubhouse. Each month, you'll receive a box packed with books and gifts right to your doorstep, featuring a new spooky or mysterious theme every month. From aliens to Bigfoot to the Bermuda Triangle, perfect for young listeners like you who crave thrilling adventures. Exclusive from Micro Terrors listeners, use promo code TERROR10 to get 10% off your first box. Visit creepyclubhouse.com and then use TERROR10 as your promo code and start your spooky journey today. Join the club. Embrace the creepy.